Welcome back guys, how are you all doing? My name is Marks, this is Marxcraft, and today we're going to be making a slime farm. Right guys, so since last episode we've done quite a bit. We finished this base area here, kind of, and we also went to a village and we stole the villagers. We went back to the village. And we stole some cows. And we started work on the skelly farm underneath. And that skelly farm encroached on the slime farm we're going to be building today. And speaking of the slime farm we're building today, we need to take a trip to the nether first. So let's go do that, and then we'll get building the slime farm. Got my flint and steel. Here's the nether portal. Well, let's get going. So the reason we're actually going to the nether was then to get attacked by gas as soon as we come through the portal. That was a fail. Ooh, close. Awesome. Oh, I guess yeah. And so the reason we've come to the nether is we actually need netherrack. For not netherrack. Um magma stuff. Words. I forgot what it's called. Um Where is it? So we need to wait, make our way down to a lava lake to try and get some. That's the stuff. That stuff. I remember what it's called. So Let's get down there and collect up some of that uh, magma stuff. Ouch. Awesome. Just what we needed. Um, and then we should be able to start work on slime farm. So I'm going to collect some of this up and see what it's called. What's it called? Magma, well, oh, magma block. Okay, yeah, that that kind of makes sense. I guess I kind of prefer magma stuff. It, it's the same principle. Now I need quite, oh, ouch, quite a bit of it because essentially, oh, that's a good vein of it. Um, what it does is it's going to be the kill pad. For the slimes. Now, a small one only uses eight, and to be honest, we need we need a bit bigger than that because it's only going to be active when we're in the area, and we're not going to be there a massive amount of time. So, we need it to be pretty efficient. So that when we are there, it's going to actually work well for us. So I'm going to collect up a lot more of this and some netherrack so we can get back up. And I will meet you guys back in the base. Okay guys, so we're back here in the overworld. Right, we got what we went for. We got a bunch of magma, magma blocks, magma stone. But I just can't get it right. Right, so let's head down to the slime farm and we'll have a look at what we're dealing with. So, come on, let's go. So we need to go ooh, back inside. Now, as I said, um, this is where, oh hi guys, this is where we um, found the skelly spawner at the end of last episode. So we came, we were down here, and the skelly spawner was literally on the edge of this slime chunk. So, it was a bit of a tricky situation because I was like, okay, well, I need slimes, but at the same time, that's useful. Um, at the same time, I I need the bones. I need, you know, an XP farm of some kind for... Ouch, ouch, ouch. I need an XP farm of some kind early game. Now, 
that led me to some decision making. Um, so I went for a mine and I actually found a second skelly farm. Or skelly spawner. So immediately I was like, right, okay. I can turn the first one to a slime farm. So the skelly spawner is literally the other side of that chest. So I did actually make it into a skelly spawner, skelly farm for some time. Um, but then I started getting, getting random slimes. So I made this. And uh, it's just a basic design at the minute. It's one higher than it should be. Because to go any further in the future, you need it on this level. Now this is a Nembom MC design. Um, and it is, as I said, it's literally just a basic one. I've gone a little bit further by putting in these lava blades for the bigger slimes. Um, but this is why we need the magma cubes. So they sit underneath the water here. Now we are going to need slime at some point to go slime, ice to go under the uh, pressure plates here. But uh, yeah, what we need to do first is we need to clear out as much of that as we can. So I am going to go into my camera account, get him on in spectator mode, and we're going to clear away this chunk. So I will see you guys once that's done. Okay guys, so that took a lot longer than I expected it to, and I realised about halfway through that time lapse, I derped. I derped hard. So what I'd done in the time lapse, I, I only cleared out this middle bit, and I realised, as I said, halfway through, um, I needed to clean, clear, sorry, I needed to clear the uh, three around as well for the slimes to fall in. I've only gone two extra platforms because any more than that would be ridiculous for um, solo play. I need to still put the string in on this this layer because it adds an extra platform uh, spawning space for the slimes. So the game thinks that something has spawned there and tries to spawn it. So as I said, I will post the tutorial that I follow from Nembom in the description. Um, but yeah, this is the slime farm. It's already producing a decent amount for us. It's um, it's already started. We've got about two and a half stacks in each of the chests around the side. I've gone ahead and also increased, not massively increased, but I've uh, I've increased the chest. So we've got double chest here now. I've not put the ice column in here because of how often I might need it, it's not going to be filling them too much. Um, so yeah, this one, this one always seems to get the least. Uh, but that one's got two and a half in down there. Um, but as well, earlier on, we went to the nether to get the magma blocks. And while we were there, I fell down getting them, but I also got lost trying to find my way back. While I was lost, 
I actually found another fortress. Now it was uh, it's quite some way away from where we were, but it might be worth just seeing if we can get over there because after doing that, I realized how badly I need a beacon. So we could really do with getting the wither skulls. So which way we went? This way was it? Or was it this way? No, it was the other way. So we went this side for the magma stuff. Wow, buddy. That took way more than it should have done. I need to get some practice in. So it was down here somewhere. Is that it there? Yeah, you can see it in the corner. The uh, damn it! I need to stop doing that. I've not got feather falling. At some point, I am going to die just from being stupid and falling off the edge. So let's make our way over to that fortress. And see what we've got. Hopefully it's over a lake. Because if it's over a lake, it's going to make it a lot easier. Yes. If I clear that out, get rid of all of that, it should help with the wither skelly spawning and I can use that for a blaze spawner oh this is brilliant so we came from up there so I'm not going to do that now but the fact that we know we've got one here is brilliant because it means we can get a beacon if we can get a beacon it's going to make things a lot easier to make mining easier, it's going to make uh, terraforming easier, taking the land off. I've got to get back up there now. Fantastic. That's what I get for jumping down like an idiot. Come on, instant stairs. Wow, this, this is higher than I thought it was. There we go, all the way up, perfect. So yeah, let's um, let's get back. I'll uh, I'll sort that out at some other point. Get a bit of quartz actually while we're here. Ooh, it's a decent day. Because what I want to do, I want to hop into the creative world and give you guys a glimpse of what you're gonna get. Coming up because we've had two, well, one and a half, I suppose, less uh, active building episodes. Um, so I want to give you a glimpse of what we can expect with the farming village that I'm going to be doing in the next, or starting at least in the next episode. So uh, let's get back into the world here and then we'll hop into a creative world and. Uh, I'll show you sort of a few of the, or at least one of the designs that I've got planned for part of the farming village. So let's hop into that creative world and give you a glimpse of what's to come. Okay guys, so here we are in the creative world. Uh, as you can see behind me here is one of the designs. You can see a few chimney stacks in the background of the others as well, but this is the one we're going to be having a look at. So as you can see, we've got the stone wall around this one and um, that was more just to to give it more of a finished look it will be sort of part of the border of the the village anyway um we've got a lovely custom oak here uh, probably could spend longer on that but the more I do to it the more it seems to go weird and i'm not happy with it so i'm just going to leave it as it is i've got to obviously try and recreate this in survival so that's going to be fun um but yeah we basically what we've tried to do is go for 
we're going for sort of a Middle Ages look with these. So we've got the, the gates on the windows that act as essentially shutters. Um, but the idea of them is, is they're a cheap, quickly built, poor houses that so the farmers live in. So this is going to be sort of a self-contained uh, village. So they, they look after each other and um, provide obviously for the part of the city, the trade city. Um, so there's going to be probably a couple of farms, but this is going to be one of the smaller ones. Um, one of the poorer ones, so say like the, they were there first in the in the fields around, and um, they've not really grown. the The city sort of developed its own farming areas, so they they still survive on sort of end of meat and looking after themselves and keeping themselves away from it. Um, yeah, they're all all sort of this Middle Ages style, so they're quite small houses. Um, and Pinterest was. Pinterest was a great help with this because obviously you don't see much. You get medieval style and they tend to be a bit bigger. But to get these little sort of uh, stone and uh, lime walls with thatch roofs generally. But hay, hay I didn't like the look of. Um, It's too yellow. Uh, birch and sandstone seem to seem to go better for it. Um, now, if it was just all birch, it looks a mess. So that's why we've got the sandstone in to texture it a little bit. Uh, we've also got the horse carts here as well. And now this is something I, I've been playing with. It may change a little bit more still, because I'm not 100% happy with it. Uh, but it's it's better than some of the iterations. The problem is, is the size of it. don't want it to be as big as it is, but to get it smaller, it doesn't look right. So I need to I need to research to see what I can do for it because at the minute it's very close to the size of the house and that just it's just weird. I mean come on. Since when's a horse cart that big? I mean I know it's Minecraft, but I've got there must be something I can do. Aside from making this bigger, I could I suppose we could bring it outside, have it here and then it's not going to look as daft next to the house. Um, but yeah, it's, it's all things we can play. We've got a little wheelbarrow over here. Now I do have the the statues data pack in as well, so I can add in some more small details and things. So like, uh, if there was tool shed, like this is supposed to be a tool shed, I can add in like shovels and axes and and whatnot, sort of up against the walls and everything like that, and just give it some proper character. Um. But yeah, there's it's quite a bit of work I've got to do. And um but and this is sort of the thing we're going to be looking at initially. This is one of the designs. Um but yeah, hopefully you uh, you guys enjoyed the episode. Hopefully you've enjoyed the the first attempt at a time lapse I've had today. Um I do hope to get better at them. And I do hope to do a few more. But uh yeah, I think that's going to be it for today's episode, guys. Thanks for watching, and I will see you all in the next episode. Bye for now.